at this time, we'd like to acknowledge some of the clergy that, all of the clergy that is here. Father Crosser, stand up, take a bow. <laughs> Sister Don Marie. And Father Sailor and Father Speecher. It's good to know you're all here. Because after tonight's over, it might be the first time in my life that I had confessions twice in one day. But I'm being good. I'm being good. They said it's a family show. Be good. Hey, um, my, my pianist left before I even got to do anything. You know, Mike, we had a musical number to start off with. And he chickened out on me. He really did, Claude. And I'm supposed to thank him later on. I don't know if I'm going to do it now. We weren't going to do a Neil Patrick Harris thing. We were going to do a musical number, and I'm kind of bummed out now that he he left. So, um, but what we do do what we do 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 what we what we can I say that or do I cut that out of the that part? Um, since we do have cameras here, and we actually have some hidden cameras, I thought we'd throw the lights off a little bit there. This is Sigler, the best art teacher in the room. <laughs> That's two for you, okay? Meatballs and those stuff. <laughs> Keep in score. We have some hidden cameras. We're gonna uh, throw the lights up back here. The father and sister are still in the dark. I wanna see light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, usually, I'm used to going into schools with the little kids, like you go in with a lot of the little kids, and I go in and do book signings and draw pictures and ask questions to the little kids. And by the way, kids do say the darndest things. And uh, usually, I, it's a question and answer thing with me. And I'm used to, uh, uh, like the Carol Burnett show, people ask a question. So, and I know there's questions out there about mascots. Besides the almighty question, is it hot in there? <laughs> Do we have any questions from the young and the young at heart about anything with a mascot? This is your, your time. I'm going to come to you with this microphone. I know, I know. I've seen most of you at the games. I can't really do anything now. You know, it used to be great being Steve, you'd walk up and knock somebody's hat off and take their popcorn and get away with it. Now, I, when I do it, I kind of, well, you know, security and confessions. But it's kind of weird. So any questions? Do you have anything? Do you, do you like mascots? Sports fans, who's your favorite mascot? I know. You don't know? Here, why? Good answer. For the record, he said steamer. Is there any questions that anybody has? You're kidding me. Because I'm constantly stopped and asked questions about, about the whole steamer thing. But if you, if you really want the really good answer, you should ask him. Bill Bentley. I got another one out on him, Tom, so you know, I'll be out of his will, too. You know, Doc. I am married to a physician's assistant, and I have so much respect for the medical field, very much. And uh, hey, that boys, don't fight up here, don't fight. Don't fight. <laughs> and the weird thing though is, I don't know if anybody out here is married to a doctor or a PA. It's kind of weird whenever you play doctor. <laughs> Janet keeps giving me all these extra scripts here. Excuse me. Because the last time we played doctor, she removed my appendix. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That's, I won't go, hey, thank you. At least somebody's paying me. Thank you. Five second rule. <laughs> I'm not going to see that meatball for a long time. I know. I'm not. So without further ado, we are also here tonight as an inductee, Dr. William Kirsch. Give me a napkin, too. He will be presented by, not a stranger here at all, Doug Wolf. Round of applause for Doug. He's presented Dr. Kirsch. Good evening, and welcome to another Bishop Guilfoyle tradition, the Ring of Honor, honoring 43 giants in this school's history. 
The Beachy community is a complex and marvelous mix of energy, emotion, faith, comfort, friendship, learning, strength, pride, accomplishment, struggle, heritage, and loyalty. Much like the makeup of many of the healthy families that attended this school. This unique mix of human emotion can best be summed up in the words and phrases used by some of our alumni children as they try to explain their feelings about Bishop Guilfoyle to their friends who didn't attend BG. After struggling to find the words that adequately grasp the feelings they feel that are, are, A-R-E, BG, they usually respectfully end up saying something like, well, it's more than a school. It's just different. We're BG people. Or when questioned about where they were or what they did last night in another city, my daughters say, we were out together, or we were working on a project, or we were helping so-and-so. When pressed by their parents about who the we they've been hanging out with is, the frequent response from them is, with BG people. So, Bill Kirsch is BG people. I got his resume, and it's six pages long, and it has big words in it, and it even has Latin. There was, <laughs> So I asked Mike Walton, I said, can't we get something I can work with here? And, and, and I really couldn't, so I, I thought I'd talk a little bit about what Bill and June, because they are, they are a team in this, uh, in this award time. It's people like Bill and June who help continue to knit the purple and gold blanket that wraps many of us warmly as we face the world here and away from our Pleasant Valley roots. Bill and June generously support the Bishop Guilfoyle mission in every way possible. They support this school as supportive parents who have opened their home to many of their children's classmates over the years. If you've seen, or jo seen John or Halden and the crew they run with, I know that feeding them alone after an event would earn a cafeteria manager honors to the Kirch Kitchen. <laughs> Bill and June have been staunch financial benefactors to Bishop Guilfoyle. They not only chose to make the sacrifice to send five of their children through Bishop Guilfoyle, they're also members of Bishop Guilfoyle's Founder Club and Marauder Club, along with years of significant annual contributions to this school's Guilfoyle Fund. And that's not enough. Bill has devoted literally hundreds of hours to both the advisory board and his service to the founding board of trustees of this school. And Bill often took the lead in tackling and advising the administration in some of the most complex and emotional areas like the creation of, athletics are pretty important to BG, and as a board of trustees starting this, nobody wanted to wade into this. And, but Bill said, well, somebody has to. We said, you're the man, and he stepped in on it. So Bill helped with the creation of the Athletic Association and the Policies and Procedures Manuals for Bishop Guilfoyle's market-leading athletics and extracurricular programs as a trustee representative. Bill also served for years as a member of the Executive Committee of Bishop Guilfoyle and worked closely with school administrators on the day-to-day -day operational matters that required and benefited from his understanding and expertise. I've known Bill and have, have, since we've served together since the advisory board and have witnessed his intensity, his drive, his compassion, and his spirit of service to the Christian values of the Bishop Guilfoyle education experience. And I can confidently say the Kirsch family is one of those families of BG people who surely, subtly, and consistently add strength to the BG community. Congratulations on this much deserved honor. basketball in a few years, but uh, I'm, I'm overwhelmed to be in the midst of Don and Marty here, but, uh, and I thank the Ring of Honor uh, committee for picking me. I don't know how they found that out, but anyhow. There are many friends who provided assistance to me during my time involved with Bishop Guilfoyle Catholic High School. And I thought it would be prudent if I didn't single out any individuals, because then I'd leave somebody out invariably. Uh, my wife, June, is 
close personal advisor who keeps the family matters under control, often in my absence, and she deserves some special thanks. She's been my stalwart companion and somebody that, I guess I've been very fortunate to have her at my side. So, anyhow, I'd like to uh, scroll through some of the things that in the past and uh, cover what I've done at BG and, and a little bit about myself and how I got into this uh, situation. Uh, uh, the, the talk tonight will include uh, a scripture quote, a poem, and a song. And I would like help with the song. I'll let you know when. Uh, first is some excerpts from the, 20, no, the 49th chapter of Isaiah. The Lord called me from birth, from my mother's womb, he gave me my name. You are my servant, he said to me, my God is now my strength. Though I thought I had toiled in vain for nothing and uselessly spent my strength, yet my reward is with the Lord, my recompense is with my God. For now the Lord has spoken who formed me as his servant from the womb. I am made glorious in the sight of the Lord, and my God is now my strength. I will make you a light to the nations, he said, that my salvation may reach the ends of the earth. Now, it's said that the foundation for those who want to live a pleasant life and have inner peace is to follow religious and moral teachings. Now, my mother saw that I had a good foundation. Before we got breakfast in the morning, we knelt. And she led <coughs> morning prayers every morning before breakfast. My dad, who was a wise man and showed a lot of ability in providing for the family and a good moral education, he had faith in me and having, he had only a one room school education, but he supported me in my choice and let me go to St. Vincent to prep school in 10th grade. Reason being very simple, I told him I was quitting. After ninth grade at the public high school, I had eight years with the Good Mercy Nuns, and I was, I guess I was getting in trouble more than I was learning. I didn't think I learned anything that year. So he let me, sent me off to St. Vincent Prep. And uh, my son Nick, just last week, came home and gave me a cap, and I didn't know the prep burned out in 1965, I think. And here it is, St. Vincent Prep. They now have a cap. I don't know if they're going to resurrect the prep school down there. But, uh, I, was, I was very impressed with the cap. Anyhow, uh, my education background uh, has been lengthy. Once I left St. Vincent, I spent 15 more years in school, you know, as a slow learner, I guess. Uh, in fact, when, uh, when my first son was born, I needed money to finish my residency at Duke, and uh, my dad had to co-sign a note. He said, son, you got an MD, I was there. I said, docs make good money, I thought. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting there. He says, uh, I just want to know when you're off my payroll. That's what I'm <laughs> so anyhow, that worked out very nicely. And but what it did, the good nuns and St. Vincent and Georgetown and med school, showed me the importance of a Catholic education, the principles of teaching academics and morals, showing the importance of maintaining a healthy body through athletics, where you learn competitive sports, and you learn to be competitive, and you learn to work as a team, and look, bring out the best in all the other team members. My uh, next section follows the poem, and this is, uh, a New Day by Hartzell Wilson. This is the beginning of a new day. I have been given this day to use as I will. I can waste it or use it. I can make it a day to be remembered for its joy, its beauty, its achievements, and I can be filled with pettiness too. 
What I do today is important because I'm exchanging a day of my life for this day. When tomorrow comes, this day will be gone forever. But I will hold something that I have traded it for. It may be no more than memory, but it's worthy of one, I shall not regret the price. I want to be a gain, not a loss, good, not evil, a success, not a failure. Now, so trying not to waste my days and make a difference in the world, it was a persistent effort to live out these principles as best I could. First I realized that it was not me. Not me. Uh, I have to tell myself that almost every day, sometimes more than once. It's been my good fortune to see that doing a little thing to help others can be very personally rewarding. Uh, when I was in St. Petersburg, one hot day, uh, sitting at a stop sign, a stoplight, and uh, some peddler bum came up. He had this ratty old suitcase and about three layers of clothes on. It's 92 degrees. And he taps on the window, and I wound it down. He says, can you tell me where the bus station is? And I said, I don't think I can tell you, but the light's about to turn green. Get in, I'll take it. So we're going down the street. It was only a few blocks away, and I pulled up in front of the bus station, and I reach in my pocket, you know, and get a few dollars out of here. He's going to hit me. He came over, <laughs> poked in the window, and he said, God bless you. Try not to judge. I didn't do very well. Now, I've done better. I've had better judgment moments. When I was at Elton Hospital, a young boy with cerebral <coughs> palsy came up uh, with his father from Williamsburg, and he wanted a job or he wanted to go into the training program we had for people to draw blood and uh, do some clerical work in the lab. And the cerebral palsy was bad. And I said no. And I said, I do need some help in nuclear medicine. So I'll put you down there as a trainee. I'll get you a little stipend so you have gas money and enough for lunch. And we'll see how it works. Well, after about a month or so, it wasn't <coughs> working. Now, the chief tech, the senior tech, was a woman about 45 or so, and she was very motherly. And she treated him accordingly. And he sort of pulled the cerebral palsy game on her. So I called him in and I said, this is not working. So I told her, he's a trainee, treat him like one. I told him. Cerebral palsy is not a disability, not for this job. And he walked out and they went back to work. A couple of months, things improved dramatically. So after about a year, I realized that he wasn't going to make rather much money. He had no papers. All he had was high school. And you all know how important it is to have papers. So I called him in the office. I found a course for a nuclear medicine text in Cleveland. And I said, I think you ought to go to Cleveland. Now, here's a boy that went from Williamsburg to Altoona. That was a major trip. <laughs> Cleveland was the other end of the world. But he commiserated over it. And finally, with a little prodding, he went and filled out the papers and went out to train. He came back to work in nuclear medicine. And today, I was over at Altoona Hospital, and they were having a party. He was retiring as the chief tech in nuclear medicine with 45 years experience. <laughs> so sometimes we judge a lot better. My constant effort is to touch and improve those around me and this has led me to be very busy seeing patients with thyroid disease and heading the clinical laboratory. I was surprised. I think my friends, though they didn't know Marty and Dana, they thought maybe nobody would be here, so a whole crew from the lab. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anyhow, when we arrived back in, I came back in Blair County from Florida in uh, 1983, and uh, very fertile Blair County. June and I had five children within eight years. <laughs> we cheated a little, we adopted one. But uh, we thoroughly enjoyed the active family life and we sent all five children through the Catholic school system, eight grades at St. Patrick's in Newry, 
and of course four more here at Bishop Guilfoyle Catholic. Our adopted son Warren, who was a very non-academic type, was provided with great moral teaching here. And he's a great guy. He's now married and working as a welder in the Pittsburgh area. Emily, who has a degree in health policy administration, is married to an Air Force officer and they have three children. Uh, they will be moving soon from Los Angeles to Dayton, Ohio, where her husband Tom is stationed at Wright-Patterson. And we're looking forward to being able to drive out to see the kids and not fly. Uh, the next one, his name is Nicholas Andrew. Okay? Now, he's doing pretty good. He's working on a PhD in engineering at Pitt. Think you can handle that? Okay. Uh, Nick, Nick starred as, uh, he played football senior year as a defensive end. And he said, uh, you know, he said, I asked him once, I said, don't make many tackles as a defensive end. He said, no, I got the Stefano and Georgiana behind me, one of them. He said, I clear out the, the blockers and they make the tackles. So they, <laughs> and uh, so he, uh, he's doing well. Uh, John, who's here tonight, is an all-sports guy, and uh, he enjoyed a run with the basketball team that won District 6 his senior year. John is a physical therapist working at CORE up on 6th Avenue here. Alden, the baby, is, uh, I think he has the BG shot put record. It's nearly 50 feet when he was here. And uh, he is, he's about a half a head or so taller than me. Big hulk of a guy. In fact, my wife thought I was shrinking one day when I was standing there. <laughs> I said, I don't think, I don't know. So I said, I'm still taller than you, so I think you're shrinking too. Right? But uh, anyhow, he's uh, lined up a job in Rome as the RA for the Duquesne campus in Rome, and uh, he'll be spending three semesters over there. Now, the, uh, I lost my page here. This is not good. Anyhow, I had a great speech written. It's almost done, too. Oh, here we go. Uh, my involvement with BG was it was, it was sort of personal because June and I felt the Catholic school system would clearly be best for our five children. And uh, <clears throat> it's been well demonstrated since all five have done rather well. The faculty, administration, the staff, the clergy, the coaches, the trustees, the parents, the families of the other kids, uh, they make up the personality of this school, which is fantastic. This provides a great start for young people who spend their most formative years here at BG. They're all part of the system that guides our teenage students to be the best that they can be. I uh, <clears throat> spent five years on the BG advisory board when the school was managed by the diocese, and then I spent six more years as the initial group, the board of trustees of Bishop Guilfoyle Catholic High School. Now, I've served on a lot of different boards and medical staff uh, committees and things like this. I've uh, been chief of medical staff, three different hospitals. But the members of the BG board uh, were unique. They provided their skills, their personality, and they worked in, in harmony to make this a great place for your children and mine. And it was a real pleasure, and especially an honor for me to be part of that founding group of Bishop Guilfoyle Catholic High School trustees. Now the song, are you ready? <laughs> now, I told you I'd need your help at the outset. Now, this isn't, this isn't difficult. This will add to your evening's experience. Uh, the song is a long, it's three verses, and basically, it, it has a message. Now, St. Augustine wrote a book called The City of God, about 800 pages. I don't know if any of you have gone through that, I'm sure. One of the priests must, might have. But, uh, <laughs> The essence is one of, of salvation, and don't follow the temptations of the devil. <clears throat> now, your line's going to be simple. I'll raise my hand and do a little guidance here. It's yippee-i-a, yippee-i-o, in the sky. Are you ready? Are you ready? And old God opened right now one dark and windy day. Upon a ridge he rested as he went along his way. When all at once a mighty herd of red-eyed cows he saw, a plowing through the ragged sky and up the cloudy draw. 
Their horns were black and shiny, and their hooves were made of steel. Their brands were still on fire, and their hot breath he could feel. A bolt of fear went through him as they rumbled through the sky. For he saw the riders coming hard, and he heard their mournful cry. Yippee-yay, yippee-yay, oh, ghost riders in the 